She is Britain's own androgynous muse, capable of playing practically any role. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 Tilda Swinton performances. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be considering all of Swinton's roles, from film to TV, and the bizarre to the wonderful. Number 10, Lucy and Nancy Mirando, Okja. These little piggies will be the ancestors of a whole new species. Tilda Swinton is a versatile actress, so playing a dual role is no problem for her. In this odd sci-fi adventure film, Swinton plays eccentric CEO Lucy Mirando, with bounds of forced whimsy and childlike anger, giving a performance that could be best described as Ivanka Trump as directed by Tim Burton. I know what they're calling me, those ALF They're calling me a psychopath. For Lucy's twin sister Nancy, Swinton transforms on screen into a much less insane character, but one who is just as despicable. Such a shame we had to tell all those little white lies. Only an actress of her caliber could find two different ways of being this skin crawling in one film. Number 9, Casey Cox, Burn After Reading. I've been thinking about writing a um, a book or, uh, you, you know, a sort of memoir. <laughs> Pairing Swinton with filmmakers like the Coen brothers seems like an ideal match, and their idiosyncrasies line up perfectly in this dark comedy. Playing the wife of a retiring CIA analyst in an affair with a US Marshal, Swinton's Katie Cox makes for a perfect straight foil in the midst of a cavalcade of insane characters. Is that how you see me? Hammering him? Of course not. It's... No, but that was your word. Yeah. I don't hammer. No, of course not. Listen. She brings some degree of sanity to the Cohen's usual off-kilter sense of reality and stands tall against the likes of George Clooney and John Malkovich. And behave. You're not speaking to one of your shithole buddies. Number eight, Gabriel Constantine. Alone should guarantee my entry. How many times have I told you? That's not the way this works. In one of many roles in her career where she plays a gender non-conforming character, Swinton brings a fresh approach in her interpretation of the angel Gabriel. In this Keanu Reeves starring adaptation of the comic book Hellblazer, this depiction of God's messenger is portrayed in a far darker light, showing a disdain for humanity and John Constantine specifically. Call me provincial. I am simply <laughs> seeking to inspire mankind to all that was intended. Though not the favoured adaptation of the demon slaying anti hero by fans, Swinton's performance alone makes the film worth a look. Gabriel, you're insane. The road to salvation begins tonight. Number 7, The Ancient One, Doctor Strange. There was so much controversy surrounding the casting of Tilda Swinton, a white woman, in the role of the Ancient One in Marvel Studios as Doctor Strange. Thank you, Ancient One, for seeing me. You're very welcome. Then again, considering the original comic book version could be perceived as an Asian stereotype, there was no easy way to win. Fortunately, Swinton's performance as the mentor to Doctor Stephen Strange transcends those difficult issues and gives another uniquely Swinton-esque performance. You defended the New York Sanctum from attack. With its master gone, it needs another. Hey, who doesn't want to see her fighting with magic on the side of a building? Number 6, The White Witch, The Chronicles of Narnia franchise. I have no children of my own. And you are exactly the sort of boy who I could see one day becoming Prince of Narnia. Though she can play sensitive when she wants to, Swinton is often at her best when she's playing a cold-hearted bitch, and this character is one of the coldest. Taking on the iconic villain from C.S. Lewis's fantasy series, Swinton easily slips into the icy role of the White Witch of Narnia, making for a perfect adversary to the curious children. Behold, the great lion. Though defeated in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Swinton returned for minor appearances in both Prince Caspian and Voyage of the Dawn Treader, proving you can't keep a good villain down. One drop of Adam's blood, and you free me. Number five, Eve, only lovers left alive. You nutcase. I can keep a secret. You should know that. Tilda Swinton already has an ethereal quality to her beyond us mortals, so having her play an immortal woman makes perfect sense. In this 2013 film from acclaimed indie director Jim Jarmusch, Swinton plays one half of a vampire couple with Loki himself, Tom Hiddleston, as her lover. Oh, my liege lord. We've been here before. 
Remember? And you missed all the real fun, like the Middle Ages, the Tartars, the Inquisitions. It's as offbeat and fascinating experience as you would expect from the director of Ghost Dog and Coffee and Cigarettes, and Swinton's performance is a key part of that, earning her an Independent Spirit Award nomination for her efforts. Where is it? It's just 50 light years away, in the constellation Centaurus. Mm. Number four, Karen Crowder, Michael Clayton. When you really are enjoying what it is you do, who needs balance? There's your balance. For the role that won her a Best Supporting Actress Oscar, Swinton played a far more grounded character than her usual exploits. In the George Clooney starring legal thriller, Swinton's Karen Crowder is on the edge of a mental breakdown and taking drastic measures to protect her company, which only puts her in the crosshairs of Clooney's titular fixer. In the morning, I'm calling Marty Bach, but then you know that. Thank you, Michael. As usual, Swinton delivers a powerful antagonistic performance, but one where she is as pathetic as she is ruthless, which is proven in her final confrontation with the eponymous character. You got your heart racing, don't I? I don't know what the hell it is you think you're doing. What do you think I'm doing? The suit's over, we have a deal. Whatever that is, it's uh, meaningless at this point. Number three, Minister Mason, Snowpiercer. Passengers, this is not you. This is disorder. Prior to her collaboration with Bong Joon-ho on Okja, Swinton appeared in the Korean director's English language debut. Like her later performance, Swinton's villainous Mason isn't exactly a sane individual, but it's hard to be normal when you've spent most of your life on a train that never stops. You repay his kindness with violent hooliganism. You scum. Her powerful sense of superiority makes her an easy figure to hate, and the perfect foil for Chris Evans and his fellow bottom dwellers to rise up against. Stop! Stop everybody! Number two, Orlando, Orlando. And for your heirs, Orlando, the house. Based on the novel by Virginia Woolf, Orlando is possibly Swinton's strangest role, but also one that perfectly sums up everything about her as an actress. Tasked with playing the titular English nobleman who miraculously changes gender and becomes immortal, the role seems tailor-made to Swinton's abilities, and she, of course, excels in every facet. Nothing thicker than a knife's blade separates melancholy from happiness. Like its source material, Orlando uses its unique premise to discuss gender roles through history, and who better to embody that than an actress who has embodied both throughout her career? Yes. Yes. Before we reach our number one pick, here are a few honourable mentions. The report describes an assault with scissors. That, that was, was the, the girl, girl that did that. Good. We value our secrecy. You know, it's not a good idea. I'm a disaster to be in love with. Number one, Eva Kachadorian, we need to talk about Kevin. <laughs> As much as we love Tilda Swinton when she's playing strange, larger-than-life characters, it's in her more human roles where she really gets to show off the subtleties of her acting. Swinton's role as the mother of an extremely disturbed child is one of the most heartbreaking performances of her career. What Mummer did was very, very wrong. And she's so, so sorry. Her relationship with son Kevin, played by Ezra Miller, is truly haunting, and Swinton sells us on the horror of a mother scared by her own child. It's a performance more than deserving of her Golden Globe and BAFTA nominations. I want you to tell me why. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.